What's up friends, it's Joelle and welcome back to another video. This week we are trying to eat and exercise like Taylor Swift. After having so much fun trying my Ariana Grande workout video for a week, I thought it'd be really cool to try Taylor Swift's. Cause let's just be real, Taylor Swift is a national treasure but so are her legs. I don't know about y'all but Taylor Swift definitely had an album for every single boy that I had a crush on that did not like me back, which was all of them in high school. So. Wow. For some general rules when it comes to Taylor Swift's exercise, from my understanding, she does a lot of dance-based cardio and does at least one hour of cardio a day while on tour that often consists of running on an elliptical or treadmill or just running outside. For some general background on her diet, it sounds like she eats pretty freely but tries to stay healthier during the weekdays and will let herself have some more sweets and indulge a little bit more on the weekends. As a general rule, she also avoids sugary drinks and she says that she has around 10 cups of water a day, so I will try to do the same during this challenge. It's day one of the challenge and my alarm didn't go off, so I woke up 40 minutes late. <laughs> Waking up late was definitely not the way that I planned to start this challenge, but hey, realistically, I'm sure the life of a pop star comes with all kinds of surprises as well. One thing I always wonder about with celebrities is how much time they actually feel like they have to take care of their bodies. Like, is it built into their schedules as part of their job, or are they fighting to find time for themselves like the rest of us regular people? I know for a lot of us, once work picks up, exercise can be one of the first things to go, so this challenge definitely pushed me to find time in my schedule to prioritize working on my body harder than usual. Okay, I just finished the Body by Simone workout that was linked on this article when Taylor Swift was talking about her trainer that she likes a lot. Um, it was not exactly what I thought it was gonna be. This was way more at home friendly. It's more like Pilates moves. Still definitely tiring. Like I am very tired, but it was only 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna run for 10 minutes on the treadmill really quick and then try to get 30 more minutes of workout in at some point later today. One thing I appreciate about Taylor Swift's diet and health overall is that it seems very intuitive, at least with what she shares in the magazines. Her philosophy when it comes to exercise is that she works out not to get skinny, it's so that she's not panting on stage, which is definitely something I'd love to implement in my own life because it prioritizes passion and self-care. And I know that's a lot easier said than done. I guess drink one glass of water, but um for the work day, I'm gonna drink out of this thing so that I can track how much I'm drinking. Apparently Taylor Swift always has her fridge stocked with hummus, so I felt like it was an appropriate snack to have a carrot and some hummus. Yay. I'm actually kind of sweaty. It's embarrassing. Due to eating generally clean and intuitively, her weekday meals are pretty general. In most magazines, she mentions salads, sandwiches, and yogurt throughout the week, which I'm all here for, but living in an Asian household, you'll see a lot of my healthy basics have a lot more of an Eastern influence. But let's be real, I think Taylor would love them if she had them too. I was thinking about what has made Taylor Swift so relatable over the years, and in one article I found, Taylor talked about how when she was younger, whenever she felt any sort of pain in life, she knew she could go home and write about it after. And as someone who is super resistant to getting deeply emotional, even despite having a public YouTube channel, I feel like we don't give enough credit to artists for their emotional vulnerability. I just want you guys to all appreciate the fact that I'm wearing a red sweater. Not exactly a cardigan, but close enough. Even though emotional songs could just feel like something fun to play during a car ride, it's really interesting to think about the creation process of that art. And I definitely think it's because of Taylor's personal investment in her songs that 15 year old Joelle felt so seen belting songs like You Belong With Me and Fearless as I was doing homework or coming home from another day of high school being unnoticed by my crush, which was every day for me. This is honestly super embarrassing and I'm totally exposing simpy high school Joelle right now, but I remember when 1989 came out and I'd just gotten dumped by a dude and I would just sit in my car in my sad boy feels listening to Blank Space and Taylor saying that one line, boys only want love if it's torture and i was like yo taylor you right girl i felt that and literally it was blank space and all you had to do was stay that got me through that breakup so thank you t-swiz okay it is 4:50, and i got really hungry 
having a little snacky poo. Hip peas are like one of my favorite snacks ever. They're like Cheetos, but they're made out of chickpeas. Um, these are the sriracha flavor, which sounds bomb. Not that I think that Taylor Swift necessarily eats these exactly, but your girl likes hummus. These are also made out of chickpeas. So I think Taylor Swift would really like this snack if she hasn't tried it already. <laughs> Taylor Swift would never eat this. It looks so bad, but I'm sorry for the non-aesthetic dinner. I'm having leftovers. Another thing that totally floors me about Taylor Swift is how freaking long her career has been. Girl popped off when she was like 16 or something and has been topping charts ever since. Personally, I can't imagine what chaos would have ensued if my gangly little 16 year old self was made a public figure. And I think about how much I've changed since I was 16, thank God. I remember thinking it was really weird watching Taylor Swift change aesthetics or whatever you want to call it. And as a slightly older person, I realized how ridiculously harsh I was for thinking that someone should have the same style and same taste from ages 16 to 25 or whatever. To paint a little picture for y'all, in high school, I wore a Perry the Platypus t-shirt and the same pair of lime green Converse nearly every day, so. For today's breakfast, I'm gonna try to actually make something that Taylor Swift says she has every single day, except I have modified it a little bit because I don't have the right ingredients and I was also supposed to let do this last night, I realized, didn't know that. Trying to make it work. Taylor has said in multiple interviews that her go-to breakfast is buckwheat crepes, with ham, parmesan, and a fried egg. I don't have buckwheat flour, I don't know if I have ham. So I'm gonna try to see if I can make something that looks like a nice Taylor Swift level breakfast. It's wild though, because I know I'm not the only one who gave Taylor such hate during her career for things that were totally ridiculous and normal, like changing styles. But I remember when everyone hated her for the Kim Kanye argument over permission to mention Taylor in Kanye's song, Famous. And then later how everyone found out that she'd been totally gaslit. And girl had a hashtag Taylor Swift is over party trend on Twitter, but no hashtag, sorry Taylor, we never believe women. I'm not trying to be a Taylor Swift apologist. I'm not saying she's a perfect person by any means, but as someone who works in media now, I see how a lot of headlines can be really misleading and discredit a lot of female public figures for the most absurd things, whether it's twisting quotes, having misleading headlines, or taking photos out of context. Powerful women are constantly being scrutinized for the littlest things with the intent to discredit anything they say to defend themselves. Jamila Jamil talks about this a lot on her Instagram and on her podcast, so I'd highly recommend looking into it. I love media, I work in it, but if 2020 has taught us anything, it's to remember to fact check and to leave room for benefit of the doubt. <laughs> At this point in the challenge, I was admittedly feeling slightly chaotic. I had a really stressful week with work and home life in general and definitely found that taking time for my meals was a place where I could find some relief and just not think about things. Y'all, it's Thursday. We are so close to being done with this Taylor Swift challenge, but it's been pretty good so far. I woke up today though with a lot of like shoulder pain. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of how I slept or just because I have the weakest upper body in the world and now I'm doing push-ups every day. <laughs> this morning for breakfast, I actually have my leftover crepe batter that I, I let sit overnight as you're supposed to. So I'm gonna make some more crepes and might combine it with another Taylor Swift favorite some yogurt. I know that food is a gift and obviously I love to eat, but I think part of me growing up has always been afraid of using food as a coping mechanism because I grew up legitimately afraid of getting fat. I know that's a lot to unpack, so thank you society. I realize now though that there's a fine balance to these things and in the right mindset, nostalgic food can actually be the best. I found it really interesting that a lot of the foods Taylor Swift mentions in interviews were southern comfort foods and things that I think most of us wouldn't expect a traditional skinny legend to indulge in like burgers, fries, cookies, and chicken nuggets. But for people whose lives are always on the move and constantly changing, food reminds us of childhood, home, and simpler times that can definitely shift our moods for the better. So while I don't think we should always rely on food to meet our emotional needs, you best believe if I'm having a rough day or have worked super hard, I will make myself a fat bowl of noodles or indulge in some dino nuggets like my girl. Good. Love and respect the fact that Taylor Swift says that chicken nuggets are her favorite food. So. My mom brought back all these really fancy desserts from a bakery she was at, and we all know that Taylor Swift loves a good baked good. She bakes a lot. So <laughs> I think this is consistent with the diet, okay? Tea Swizz, if you haven't been to Bouchon Bakery in Yauntville, California, it's a great time.
video you guys day five we finished most of the workout i'm gonna finish up this hour of cardio by actually jogging over to starbucks because what is taylor swift's go-to cheat day drink it's friday so i'm treating it like the weekend she's a pumpkin spice latte girl i uh haven't had one of these in actually don't even know how long. Workouts really weren't as bad as I think I thought they would be. Uh, still some boobs were really hard for me, which is tough, but it was a pretty good full body workout. It was nice to try something I'd never done before, but I'm uh, glad that I won't have to do an hour of exercise every day after this week because normally my workouts are like half that time. I also just remembered why I don't wear lipstick during quarantine because I eat all the time. And look, now that I got this lipstick on, I make a mess. We're gonna try to make one, another one of Taylor Swift's favorite breakfasts, which is sweet potato pancakes. However, um, the grocery store didn't have sweet potatoes, so I have yams. Okay, this is going to sound ridiculous, so feel free to judge me, but I was honestly shocked and low-key ashamed to enjoy that pumpkin spice latte this morning. And the only reason I can think of for this fear is because I've always been so worried about people considering me basic and unoriginal. And I even remember later on in high school and college when I was nervous to tell people that I was a Taylor Swift fan because somehow in our cultural discourse, she'd become a bit of a classic symbol for the basic white girl taste, which I realize now is a completely judgmental and simplistic way to look at taste and culture, but they still, you know, it was there. To me, this leads to an even more interesting conversations surrounding taste and identity and how we let our taste define us and how we define others by their tastes and preferences. Fear of other people's opinions is nothing new to discuss on the internet, but hey, doesn't mean I'm not still slightly afraid to show people my Spotify wrapped or YouTube recommendations. I'm truly just ranting at this point, but this small moment during this challenge made me totally reevaluate my self-confidence and in the coming years, I 1000% want to become more confident and unapologetic for freaking liking the things that I like, even if it makes me a little bit or whatever. Okay, y'all, we made it through our week, which was actually five days, I'm sorry, of eating and working out like Taylor Swift. This was a really fun experience just to pretend like I'm in Taylor Swift's shoes for a little bit. I was not doing this for any physical change, so I don't expect there to be any physical change. I'll show y'all just in case you're curious. But more importantly, I just really enjoyed learning a little bit more about Taylor Swift's philosophy when it comes to taking care of herself. For her job, she has to take care of herself. It's for her livelihood and to be able to do something she loves and i think that that is awesome so if you guys enjoyed please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know if there's any other celebrities people who you'd suggest i try eating or working out like i continue to have the most profound respect for taylor swift as an artist and just as a human so love you guys jesus loves you and i'll see you in the next one peace <laughs>